Glory. Well, if you're happy and you know it, shout amen. amen. Turn to someone before you see to give them a handshake, a hug, tell them you love them, you're glad to see them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Brother Gordon, this is going to be about it, so if you need to give me more, you can. I'm not going to, just a little bit more. That way I don't have to push too much. Whoa, praise the Lord. Well, how many of you would rather be here than in jail? Ooh. How many of you would rather be here than in the hospital? <laughs> praise God. Listen, we've got, uh, used to call it a book table. We don't have any books yet, but uh, we've got some CDs out there. And, of course, I realize if you're a new generation, you don't, you don't even listen to CDs. But we've also got a bookmark out there that has our web address, and you can download digitally uh, uh, from the website. But uh, we've got a few things. This is, hey, how many of you remember any of the Holy Ghost meetings we used to do here? Well, years ago, we recorded uh, some live albums right here in this auditorium. Uh, with the Rhema Singers and Band, and so Mighty Is Our God was recorded here. This is look, uh, The Lord Reigns. It's kind of some of the what we call old school, the vintage, you know, but it's still got a little pizzazz to it, amen. You get happy on it. So, if you, you know, you might enjoy listening to it. So who would like this CD? All right, right here. And then we've got some teaching out there. This is called uh, What's Love Got to Do With It? And I'll tell you, it's got a lot to do with it. <laughs> And then we've got one called Maintaining the Divine Flow. I just give you some steps, you know, that you can implement along your journey that will help you in facilitating God's plan and purpose. Right over here is this lady by, it was her. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, I'll tell you what I'll do right here by, oh, that's all right. I'll tell you, you can go out to the table and get one, all right. Whoever's man in the table, just go out and give her one too, all right. Give them, give them both one. All right, and then this is called uh, In His Presence. Now, a lot of times you guys pray with that in the Holy Ghost. We had that at the men's meeting, so that's there. All right, so go out, you know, take a look and see. Listen, uh, we're so happy to be with you today. God's good. I'm sorry I forgot that side. I'll hit you next time. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> that was an accident. That's right. Somebody was pulling me that direction. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, friends, so happy to be with you today. Listen, uh, you know, at the beginning of the year, I sent out a message uh, to friends and partners, and I just felt that I should revisit that here today. If I had to entitle the message, it would be stay on the winning side. Stay on the winning side. You know, I realize some people are, are what we would call perhaps living the dream that God has placed in them. Others are still in the process. But I want to I share some things with you today that I pray will be a word of instruction as well as a word of encouragement. Uh, and just stay on the winning side. Look to your neighbor and say, stay on the winning side. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, of course, uh, Jeremiah, God speaking to the prophet Jeremiah, and he spoke these words. He said, listen, before you were uh, born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. The reality is before Jeremiah was ever born, before his mother ever gave him a name, God knew him. And God had a plan and a purpose for his existence in the earth. The same reality holds true for you and I before we were ever formed in our mother's womb, before she ever gave us a name. God had a plan and a purpose and a design for our lives and our existence. Over in Jeremiah, of course, 29, 11, I know you've heard that verse many times. And of course, the context is God is speaking through the prophet Jeremiah uh, to the children of Israel who at this time were in Babylonian captivity. It appeared, you know, by all outward natural perspectives that their hopes and their dreams and their aspirations as a nation would never come into fruition. And yet it was in this place that God spoke to them and he said, listen, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. 
I like one translation says, I alone know my purpose for you, says the Lord. It is your welfare that I have in mind, not your undoing. For you, I have a destiny and a hope. And then one of my favorite translations, the Message Bible, and boy, this brings comfort to a lot of us. God said, look, I know what I'm doing. I've got it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not to abandon you. Plans to give you the hope or the future that you're hoping for. Isn't that encouraging? And, and so uh, the Apostle Paul, of course, in Ephesians 2 and 10, he echoes uh, this same reality in a New Testament verbiage. He says, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto or for good works. Now notice, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen. Your life is not an accident. And anything that's happened along the journey hasn't surprised him, right? And so, you know, uh, the, the Amplified Bible of this same verse is taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. So, in, you know, in light of these scriptures, we can see there is a plan, there is a purpose, there's rhyme and reason sometimes to the seeming chaos. There is a destiny. Amen. And according to these scriptures, God's plan is a good plan. The paths are good. The purposes are good. And so I think we can declare this morning as a church, and I want to encourage you today corporately and personally as a believer, that we can declare personally and corporately, uh, no matter what our past or present experience may be, we can say with a sense of confidence that our best days are not behind us. They are ahead of us. You say, Brother Marty, now why can you say that with any sense of confidence? Well, I say it, friends, based upon the Word of God. Because Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, the Bible declares, and in the Amplified Version, it says the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn. It shines brighter and brighter until it reaches its full place of fulfillment or unto the perfect day, as the Bible says. Amen? So we know according to the Scripture that our path is growing brighter and brighter. Even when you lay down this body of flesh and you transition, man, it's definitely growing brighter, right? So we can have an expectation in life based upon that promise and that declaration. So this we know. If we will follow God closely, if we will listen for His counsel, if we will seek His wisdom, and if we will implement His plan, then all will go well with us. That doesn't mean there won't be resistance to the plan, strategies of the enemy to subvert the plan, and sometimes our personal mistakes. We've all made them, you know? And sometimes you can get down on yourself and think, well, I've blown it, you know? It's irreparable. I don't see any way out. But you know something? I love God's mercy. We sang about it this morning because He is a merciful God. And you know, Israel thought they'd blown it, that it was irreparable, that their hopes and dreams could never come to pass because of mistakes and rebellion and things that they'd done. But God spoke to them in the same chapter of Jeremiah 29. And in verses 12 through 14, I call it 14a, the very first sentence, God said, listen, if you will call on me and come and pray to me, I will listen. And when you come looking for me, you will find me. And when you get serious about finding me and you want it more than anything else, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. This is God's decree. And this is the part I want you to get. He said, I'll turn things around for you. How many of you could use some things turning around? <laughs> Amen. We all can. But hallelujah. There's a plan. There's a purpose. There's a destiny. And, and so we understand, you're well taught here as men and women of faith, that it's very important all along this journey 
that God has preordained, that God has prepared, that we stay in what we call alignment or agreement with God. Uh, uh, not only in agreement with His promises, not only in agreement with what He's declared over us, concerning us as His sons and His daughters, but friends, you and I must stay in agreement with God's plan, His purpose, His divine intention, the things that you've laid hold of with your faith, that which He has placed on the inside of you to become, to accomplish, to achieve, or to do. And you must be determined in life to move forward and never give up. Everybody say, never give up. So staying in agreement with God, one of the ways that you and I can stay in agreement with God, and you've heard this before, it may seem odd to some people, but it's a reality. One way that you and I stay in agreement with God throughout our journey is with our, what we would say, our mouth or our words. Now, once again, that may seem odd to people, but friends, our words not only impact the seen and the unseen realm, but you know, equally important is that our words impact our own minds, our own hearts, our own wills and determination in life. So believing the right things about yourself, about God, about his plan, about your future, and declaring the right things are both very instrumental in bringing his plans and divine intentions into fruition. So, you know, maybe you're here today and, uh, you know, you hear me saying the best is yet to come. You've journeyed a long time in life, you know. Or maybe you've had some disappointments, but you're hearing me say, hey, man, the best is yet to come. And you want to look forward with a sense of expectation and anticipation. But maybe you're carrying here today an underlying sense of disappointment because of past or present situations. Maybe there's a lack of confidence that things will ever, ever actually get better in your life. Maybe you've had some significant needs for a long time and you've yet to see those needs met or you've offered some prayers and you've yet to see them answered to this point. May I encourage you this morning by the Spirit of God, hold fast, stand strong, don't give up. Because I sense in my spirit that there are some things that have been in what I call the womb of faith for a long time. And guess what? Delivery time is drawing near. We're in an important season as the body of Christ. So I want to encourage you just to stay strong and to stand strong. And I want to uh, talk to you about staying in agreement with God, particularly now as we're ending this race. Jesus is coming. We're going to finish strong, and he's going to bring some things into, into fruition and some dreams to pass that he placed on the inside of you, corporately and personally. So in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, you know the scripture. Jesus, of course, speaking. He said these words, Assuredly, I say unto you, that whoever shall say to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Now, that is an amazing passage of Scripture. And really, if it weren't written in red, it'd be a little bit difficult to believe. But these are Jesus' words right? They're not my words. They're not your fellow believer's words. They're not your pastor's words. These are Jesus's words. And Jesus said, what a man or woman will believe in their heart and declare with their mouth has the absolute potential to become natural reality. That's amazing. This is what we call in the laws of faith, the command of faith. So if we were de uh, identifying or defining what the law of faith is, it would be simply this, the releasing of supernatural power through the spoken word with the expectation, there has to be an expectation, of changing, altering, or removing, if necessary, the mountain, 
the circumstance, the situation that is confronting us, releasing authority through the spoken word. We call this the command of faith. But what I want to speak to you this morning is not necessarily, or concerning, is not necessarily uh, this command of faith as an event, but I want us to embrace the principle of believing in the heart and declaring with the mouth as a means of staying in agreement with God concerning his plans and purposes for this church, concerning his plans and purposes for you as a believer and a Christian, and concerning his plans and purposes in the earth. Can you say amen? So your words, of course, and mine are very powerful. We understand that reality. You are a spirit being. You are not a natural being exclusively. We are spirit beings who live in a physiological body. And one day this body will be redeemed. But because we are spirit beings created in the image of God, uh, our words are of a spiritual nature and origin. And they carry tremendous impact in both the seen and the unseen realm. You know, God spoke this world, the Bible tells us, into existence. Remember Hebrews 11 and verse uh, 3? By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So that tells us that everything that you and I see in this physical, tangible world was created by, and is sustained by an unseen, intangible world. So once again, our words, right? 2 Corinthians 4 and 18, notice what Paul said. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? Temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So if we look at both of those verses, we can realize that the natural world is subject to the spiritual world. The temporary or the temporal is subject to the eternal because the spiritual and the eternal were first. So your words and mine, being of a spiritual nature and origin, can have tremendous impact on that unseen realm as well as the seen realm. So, once again, our words are important. In one sense of the word, we say words are containers, right? I mean, that bottle is containing water. Words carry substance, right? So they can carry life, peace, joy, love, confidence, faith, encouragement, right? Or they can carry death, defeat, hatred, discouragement, negativity. In fact, Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21, and you know these verses, the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat its fruit. Now, you want to really bring it home. Here's the message Bible. Words kill, words give life. There, that's why this is called words of life here, right? Words kill, words give life. They are either poison or fruit. You choose. Woo Lord have mercy. Man, I don't think most Christians realize that important reality that our words in one sense of the word dominate our lives. The reality is most often a person will never rise above the level of their confession. Most often in life, we all rise or fall to the level of our confession, not only because those words are creative in, in power, but once again, they're impacting our own mind our own hearts, our own will, our own determination in life. So once again, believing the right things and saying the right things are, are, are both very crucial. Sometimes people say, you know, is that just a bunch of legal jargon? Is this legality or is this really Bible? Friends, this is reality and this is Bible. 
I'm going to give you a little example, you know, in a moment, in, and, and we'll wait to put up the scripture, but in a moment, uh, in Numbers chapter 13, you'll remember the story of uh, Moses, of course, and the children of Israel. God had made them a promise, man. He had put a, 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 a uh, vision before them. He, had, he said, this is my plan. This is my purpose. This is my divine intention for you as a nation. They'd endured a lot of things in the journey, and now they've come up to the Jordan. It's time to cross over. It's time to possess the land. And so Moses, in preparation to possess what God had promised, he chose a delegation from the 12 tribes of Israel, one from each tribe, to go into the land, to spy out the land, to gain a strategy whereby they may obtain the promise. You know, strategies are important. Plans don't just happen. Just because he's got one, it does have to be implemented, right? We know that. So we do have our part. So they were going to go in and gain a strategy. And so they go in for 40 days, they look around, and they come back with a report. And so here is the report. In Numbers chapter 13, uh, beginning in verse 26, I'll be reading from the New King James. It says, Now they departed and they came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told them, We went to the land where you sent us and truly it flows with milk and honey and this is its fruit. Now stop right there. So they say, Hey man, we went in we see what God's promised. We, we, we have this vision on the inside. We know it's God. It's awesome. It looks great. Here's its fruit. We do that in life. We get a dream. We get a goal. We get a vision, a God dream, a God vision, a God promise. And we get excited about it. And then we make a mistake. We start looking around at all the reasons why. It's impossible. It's irreparable. It can never happen, right? And this is what they did, verse 28. Nevertheless, here's their report. The people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. So they begin to articulate with all clarity one reason after another why what God promised, what God said was theirs, what God intended could never come into fruition. We do that, unfortunately. Now notice in verse 30, Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Hey man, let's go up at once and possess it. We're well able to overcome it. But the men who'd gone up with him said, we're not able to go up against the people. They're stronger than we are. And he gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they'd spied out, saying, the land through which we've gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, come from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in theirs. Wow. You know what, friends? There will always be two clubs in life. The we can club and the we can't club. And every single one of us have to decide in life. What club am I going to join? Am I going to be a part of the we cans or the we can'ts? The I can or the I can'ts? And whichever club I join internally and mentally, that's what's going to have the impact on my life. Are you listening? And notice they said we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. What we say to ourselves about ourselves, whether audibly or inaudibly, what you say to yourself and what I say to myself and what I say to myself about my situation, about my future, 
Are you listening? About the present situation that maybe I'm facing, what I say to myself and about myself can have tremendous impact, right, on how things turn out. So Numbers 14 and 2, now watch this. We're talking about stay on the winning side. Notice 14 and 2. All the children of Israel began to complain against Moses and Aaron, right? They begin to murmur. Now notice, all the children of Israel. Isn't it interesting? Do I still have your attention? Isn't it interesting how the negative, unbelieving words of a few can impact the attitude and the confidence of so many? Are you listening? Man, we've got to be careful what we listen to. We have to be careful who we allow to speak into our ears, whether it be in the seen realm or the unseen realm, because the devil's always talking. There's so much negativity in this world, so many things to talk you out of your dreams, your destiny, your goal, God's divine intentions. We've got to be careful what we listen to. And not only what we listen to and allow others to speak into our ear, we've got to pay attention to what we say into the ears of others. Our family, our spouse, our kids, our fellow believers. Amen. So they start murmuring and they start complaining. And I want you to listen how the conversation uh, degenerates. If only we died in the land of Egypt. Or if only we died in this wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should become victims? Now, it's easiest, you know, for us to read this and, and say, how in the world? But, you know, sometimes we've done the, old, the same thing, you know. Would to God that we died in the wilderness or died in Egypt. Is this really on the table for discussion right now, Really? I mean, God just brought you out of the land of Egypt. Signs, wonders, miracles caused you to pass through a Red Sea on dry ground and swallowed up Pharaoh's army in your wake. He's fed you with manna from heaven, quail from the sky, water out of a rock, led you with a fire by night and a, a cloud by day, and now you're here, and, and, and it's time, and you're saying, would to God we died in Egypt or this wilderness? But you know, we can do that. God's been faithful to us time after time. Man, you, maybe you've had some rough times. We all have. I mean, if you've lived long enough, you've had some rough times. But you're still here. You made it. And I want you to believe the best is yet to come. Amen. You can look back when it looked impossible, impassable. But he was faithful. You made it. You're still here. And he's not finished yet. Woo! So, man. God got hot about it. You, if you read it, thank God we're in a, uh, a dispensation of grace and mercy. But God got hot about it. He said to Moses, you and there and Joshua, Caleb, you and your family, step over here. I'm about to make burnt toast of these guys. I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Moses said, nah, 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 now God, give them another chance here. You've been faithful. And he, he does. He gives us another but now, I want you to notice the impact, what I'm talking about, stay in agreement with God. Let's get back in alignment today, if you've been out of alignment. because And you can, you can get back in just like that, right? All that negative junk, you can just stop it, right? I have to pick myself up from the, the belt sometimes and say, hey, 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 hey. Get yourself together, black welder, right? And God's merciful. But listen. The, 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 the reality is every single person age 20 and older from that generation got exactly what they said. 
Not one single one of them entered into the land that God had promised and prepared and purposed for them to have. Right? They said, we can't, and they didn't. Right? Their reaction, their declaration directed the entire outcome of that situation as far as they were concerned. But in contrast, and that's what I want to talk about, in contrast, two individuals, Joshua and Caleb, they stayed on the winning side. They kept their mouth in line. They said, look, I know it seems impossible. It seems irreparable. It seems like this can never happen, that I've made too many mistakes, I've taken too many wrong turns, but if God said we can do it, we can do it. And we will. Woo! Listen. Stay on the winning side. Regarding God's plans and purposes personally and corporately, Whatever he may instruct you to do in this season, just say, yes, I can. Yes, we will. Whatever dream he may place on the inside of you to accomplish, to become, to achieve, just say, yes, I can. Amen? Whatever lands he may tell you to possess, and I use that figuratively, just say, yes. Because when God gives direction, When he births a dream in a heart, when he sets forth a purpose to fulfill, he will always give unto us the ability, the the resources, the grace, the wisdom to bring it into fruition if we will seek him for it, even if it seems like it's taken a long time. Amen? You know, Joshua, in Joshua 14, 7 through 12, I love uh, Caleb's testimony. Man, he stayed on the winning side. And watch this guy. You got to love these guys with their attitudes. He said, I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people to melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot is trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever. Why? Because you've wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive. As he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now here I am today, 85 years old. Man, don't you love that? As long as you've got breath and still breathing, the plan is in process. God still has something good for you. Amen? He said, I'm 85 years old, man, and I'm as strong today as I was on the day that Moses sent me in. Verse 11, once again, I'm as strong today as the day Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both going out and coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. Woo! Everybody say, give me my mountain. It it may have been a while, but you're still going to take it. Amen? Hallelujah. There were only two individuals, friends, that entered the land of Canaan from that generation and their families, Joshua and Caleb. What made the difference? Their attitude and their declaration. And their attitude and their declaration were formulated based upon their faith in God and his ability to do what he promised, but also in his ability to enable them to do what he told them to do. Can you say amen? So I want to encourage you this morning by the Spirit of God to embrace God's word. Embrace his plans. Embrace his purposes. Embrace his divine intentions. Re-embrace, if necessary, some dreams that you've let fall by the wayside because the time has passed and you don't see any way for it to come into fruition. Re-embrace it. 
and boldly declare it will come to pass. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Can you say amen? If God said it belongs to us, then it does. And we will not do without it. Instead of talking all the negativity, let's talk about how big God is. Let's talk about how faithful he is. Let's talk about the fact that nothing is impossible to him that believes that all things is possible with God. Woo, and if we will, if we'll stay on the winning side, we'll see these things come into fruition because once again the best is yet to come. Your path is growing brighter and brighter. Christianity is called the great confession. There's something extremely important about the words that we speak. My spiritual father, Brother Kenneth Hagin, used to say all the time, most people uh, are, are held in bondage in life because they believe the wrong things and they speak the wrong things. Their words are holding them imprisoned in a place far below God's divine intention for them. So we want to say the right things and we want to believe the right things. Amen. Now, just to kind of share a principle in closing this morning that goes along with what we're uh, talking to you about in relation to walking out the plans and the purposes of God. Remember, let me recall this to your mind because some of you need to hear it again. He said, look, I know what I'm doing. I've got it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not to abandon you, right? Plans to give you the future that you're hoping for. Now, sometimes things take time and you got to walk it out. But that's what I want to share with you in this passage of Scripture in Romans 4.17. Romans 4.17. We've had some things in the womb of faith, some of you, for quite a while, and delivery times on the horizon. Now, notice what he said. God speaking to Abraham, he said, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things that do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope in hope believed that he should become the father of many nations according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old in the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, being fully convinced that what he promised, he was also able to perform. That's a wonderful passage of Scripture. Now, you know the Bible. We won't look at it, but I'll tell you the story in Genesis chapter 12. Of course, God comes to visit a man at that time named Abram. And uh, he was 75 years old. And God said, Abram, I have a plan. I have a purpose. I have a destiny. And I'm going to make of you and your seed a great nation. I'm going to make you a, a, a father of many nations, or I'm going to bless all the nations of the world through your seed. Your descendants will be as the stars of the sky, as the sand of the seashore, right? And then he concluded, as I've stated, but I'll restate it, a father of many nations have I made thee. Now he's 75 years old, no kids, and God said, a father of many nations have I made thee. Right Now, is have made past, present, or future tense? Past. It's both past and a present reality. So God said, Abraham, here's my plan. Uh, in my realm of promise and in my realm of purpose, it's already laid out. I prepared it beforehand. The path is clear. The promise is made. And I have made you a father of many nations. Now, that's difficult for you and I sometimes to perceive because God exists outside our particular realm of time and space as we perceive it. God dwells in the realm of eternity, past, present, and future simultaneously. You understand? So when God says, I've done something, in his realm, it's already an accomplished fact, although in your realm and mine, maybe we haven't experienced it yet, right? Right? or it hasn't come into fruition. For instance, let's say there's an ant crawling across this platform. 
Now, from my perspective of time and space, I can see where that ant has been. I can see where he is. And if I stand here, I can see where he's going, past, present, and future, all simultaneously in one sphere of vision. That's God's perspective, friends. And let's say I came out here and I put a piece of fruit on the ground in, in, in Mr. Ant's path. Now, if I could communicate to him, I would say, Mr. Ant, I have given you a piece of fruit. Now, from his perspective of time and space, he doesn't see it. He's not eating it. He isn't enjoying it. But on my end, it's an accomplished fact. I've done it. It is over. There's the fruit. And that's where we are many times. There's plans, there's purposes, there's dreams, there's God-given goals. And you've prayed about it and you're, you're, you know, you, you, you've believed God and you're working toward it and you haven't yet seen the fruition of it. But God says to you this morning, look, I've already done it. It's on the path. It's in the plan. I have made you certain things, you know, that his word is declared, or what he's planned, promised, and purposed, it's already done. And what we have to do this morning is to keep moving forward, refuse to give up, believe what his word is declared, believe what he's put on the inside of your spirit to accomplish, to achieve, to become, to do, and keep moving forward. 24 years pass. No, ch no son of promise. It looked like it never come to pass. How many of you know due season's a little longer than you thought it was going to be sometimes? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it looked like it never would. But the Bible says in the set time, God visited her, Sarah, and she conceived. Amen? What are we saying to you this morning? Let's stay on the winning side. Personally, corporately, let's don't get negative. Let's stay in agreement with God. And if we will, all that he's planned and purposed uh, for us personally and corporately is going to come into fruition. Abraham believed God's word. He embraced it as a present reality. He refused to consider all the negative and contrary circumstances that were saying it would never happen. And he gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able to perform. And as a result of that, it came into fruition. So this morning, what are you saying to us, Brother Marty? Let's stay on the winning side. Let's boldly declare, yes, we can. Yes, we will. And we're not going to take no for an answer. God's hand is upon this church and has been for many years and it's going to continue to be strong. And you're a member of this church and God's plans and purpose for you personally is going to continue to thrive as long as we'll stay in agreement and just say, Lord, I might not understand it all, but I know and I declare everything you've promised and purposed is coming to path, pass and I'm going to cooperate with you to the best of my ability. You know, as the year began, the word of the Lord came to me in a service. And uh, it was just in my spirit again this morning that I should share with you. And the word of the Lord came to me saying the, this, and I want you to listen carefully. Now is not the time to let go of the things that you've asked me for. To draw back, to relinquish your position of confidence, so to speak to let go of the things that you've asked me for, to abandon that which I've placed in your heart to accomplish, to achieve, or to do. But now is the time to stand strong in your faith. Refuse to let go. Stay in agreement with me, saith God, and declare it so. It will all come to pass. Yes, Lord, we can. Yes, Lord, I will. All that you've spoken and promised and declared and purposed, it will be accomplished and it will be fulfilled. Woo, do you believe it? Listen, I'm not just preaching to, to make you happy this morning. 
I'm telling you what was in my spirit by the Holy Ghost. There's some things God has placed in the inside of people's hearts in this room. There's some assignments corporately and personally, and he's not done yet. And I know you've been discouraged of late. We all have that potential. But God is saying to you, stand back up on the inside. Hook back up with me. Stay in agreement with me. Move forward, and I'll make sure it comes into fruition. Everybody stand up this morning. Let's sing this song together. We're going to make a declaration. They're going to have some words up on the screen. Go ahead, Brother Gordon. Crank it up now. Crank it up. Woo! You're going to have to get a little movement in here now. Might have to give me a little more microphone. You got to get a little, a little rhythm. Are you ready? Come on now. Here we go. Hey! It's coming, coming, coming to pass. I know it's coming. Coming, coming to pass. Hey, everything that is said, every way I've been led, don't you know it's coming, coming, coming to pass. Hey, it's coming, coming, coming to pass. I believe it's coming, coming, coming to pass. Hey, everything that is said, every way I've don't you know it's coming, coming, coming to pass? Listen now. Woo! God's not a man that he should lie. Hey! He is the way, the truth, the lie. And if he said it would be, it is something I'll see. You know it's coming, coming, coming to pass. Everybody say it's coming. It's coming, coming. It's not over yet. Everything that is said, every way I've been led, don't you know it's coming, coming, coming to pass. Listen now. Hey, God's not a man that he should lie. Hey, <laughs> he is the way, the truth, the lie. And if he said it was it is something I'll see. Don't you know it's coming, coming, coming to pass. Somebody ought to shout a little bit in here. Whoa! <laughs> you might need to get a little happy this morning. Oh, yeah. The dream is still alive. The plan is still in process. And it's coming to pass. Every way I've been led, don't you know it's coming, coming, coming to pass. Woo! Hey! God's not a man that he should lie. He is the way, the truth, the lie. And if he said it would be, it is something you'll see. You know it's coming, coming coming to pass. Everybody say, it's coming, coming, coming to pass. I believe it's coming, coming, coming to pass. Hey, everything that is said, every way I've been led, don't you know it's coming, coming, coming to pass. Listen now. Everything that is said, every way don't you know it's coming, coming? Turn to your neighbor and say, it's coming. 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 <laughs> I'm telling you, I know it's coming to pass. Hallelujah. Woo! It's coming.
Excuse me if I get a little happy up here. I tell you, you guys are awesome. Beautiful church, beautiful people. We love you. When you go home tonight, just tell God, I agree with you. It's coming to pass. I don't care what it looks like. It's coming to pass.